everyone, Steven here from Rattle Essence with another fragrance review. And this time we have a fragrance from the niche fragrance house, Amouage, and the fragrance is called Interlude Man, or Interlude for Men. Now this is a fragrance that was released in 2012, so it is the most recent offering from the Amouage house. And this is of course a fragrance that was released at the same time as the women's version or the female rendition of Interlude Man, Interlude Woman. Now, composed in 2012, the perfumer behind this fragrance is Pierre Negrin. Now, I should mention that the Amouage house does not presently have an in-house perfumer. So, there is no single individual that is hired to compose every fragrance from the Amouage house. What they do instead is they scout out talent or they recruit talent from uh, fragrances and flavor companies around the world. So, Pierre Negrin is a perfumer that had experience and was formally trained in the uh, fragrances and flavor companies located in Gras, France. So he's a perfumer that has years of formal experience under his belt and he's of course no stranger to the fragrance industry. I would say he has more experience in the designer branch of the fragrance industry uh, because he is responsible for compositions such as Calvin Klein's Encounter, the more uh, recent uh, fragrance release for men from the Calvin Klein house, Unforgivable by Sean John, and even Polo Black by Ralph Lauren. So I felt like him being hired by the Amouage house really gave him a chance to shine and showcase his full potential as a perfumer and just really give him a chance to express his full uh, compositional capabilities and artistic creativity. So very well done on behalf of the Amouage house for hiring him and allowing him to compose this beautiful interpretation of an incense-based fragrance or what I would call an incense-based fragrance and beautiful on his behalf for going so far as to release such a beautiful fragrance. Now, one of the reasons why I say that this is an incense-based fragrance is because when the Amouage house was established in 1983 by the Sultan of Amman, um, he did it in an effort to kind of restore the traditional perfume making methods of Arab culture. So Amman is an Arab country that's located in Southwest Asia. And one of the ingredients that's traditional to the Middle East, of course, among rose and agarwood and uh, various spices, is incense. So incense is used just in a traditional sense, just to keep the fragrance smelling traditional. But I do think it's also amped up in this fragrance because this is a fragrance that was composed with a certain theme in mind. And that one being uh, one of conflict and resolution. So I have to say that the smoky opening of this fragrance attributed to the incense uh, represents the conflict portion of the theme and then the sweet resinous dry down of this fragrance due to the apophenax represents the resolution part of the theme. Now I do have a witty little analogy that I will use later on in describing exactly what I think of the theme or what I perceive it to be and I will share that with you in a bit but next up let's take a look at the presentation for Interlude Man by Amouache. Here we have the presentation for Interlude Man by Amouage. This is a fragrance that is available in two sizes, 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters. Uh, the one that I have here in front of me is the large size, the 100 milliliters. Now first up we have the box and the first thing that you're going to notice about it is this beautiful haphazard, chaotic, disorderly pattern. It's not even really a pattern, but this design of brush strokes that encompasses all four sides of the box in quite a few different colors here. So very busy and very appealing to the eye, very well done. I'm um, sure Christopher Chong had a lot to do with this. He is the creative director for the Amouage House and also uh, came up with the theme for this fragrance. On the front here, you have this beautiful, lustrous purple insignia centered in the front of the box that is embossed in there and right under it you have the name of the house written in a beautiful lustrous gold font and then the name of the fragrance written right under that nothing's going on at the bottom of the box here just more brush strokes and on the top you have the amouage crown as well as the concentration and man written right under that now the bottom portion of the box separates with the top to reveal this beautiful velvet lining on the inside of the top that completely blankets and covers the entire perimeter of the inside so it doubles as a cushion if the uh, bottle for some reason happens to come apart from the base it really just serves as an added protection for the bottle so beautifully done considering the resources available to the company and over here we have this base with this uh, very lustrous gold plated aluminum border that encompasses the entire perimeter of the base very well done and you have this raised platform here that just serves as almost like a trophy 
like it's holding up a trophy you put the bottle in there and of course the silhouette is carved in there so it fits in, into place very snugly and it doesn't come off at all and I think the bottle is really the focal point of this fragrance you have the uh, Amouage crest again glued onto this beautiful midnight blue crystal bottle you have the name of the house written right under it in a shiny gold font you have the name of the fragrance written on both sides of the bottle. That's the first time I've ever seen something like this from the Amouage house. Nothing going on at the back. And then of course the cap here, you have a beautiful sapphire blue Swarovski crystal uh, glued in the center with the name of the house written right under on the neck of the cap. And uh, this cap is made to resemble the traditional daggers used in Amman called Kanjars. So very well done and it does indeed resemble it quite a bit. And then you have the crown engraved here at the top. Just little details that make this a striking, uh, beautiful presentation from the Amouash house. And that was my presentation of Interlude Man by Amouash. Now, as far as the smell goes for Interlude Man by Amouash, this is a fragrance that, of course, opens up very smoky. Uh, two of the most perceivable ingredients in this fragrance are the frankincense and the myrrh, which are both attributed for that incense -y quality that it brings forward to the table. Now, there is a variation of myrrh used in this fragrance called sweet myrrh. Um, it also goes by the formal name of Apopinax, and it gives a fragrance that resinous sweetness that I was talking about. Now, like I said, this does appear to be, or my nose perceives this to be an incense-based fragrance, and I kind of look at the incense in this fragrance as being the backbone in the entire composition. So while it does etherealize and evaporate a bit, I don't think it completely leaves the composition. I don't think it ever calls it quits for the day. It kind of sticks around, just becomes less and less noticeable until, of course, the dry down with the resins really kick in with full force. Um, but the incense note, although it's not a top or a head note in this composition, is still very much perceivable from the opening. Another note that I do think is worthy of a mention that is perceivable from the opening is the bergamot. There's a little bit of that citrus quality in the opening, but it's really just an accent note. It's really just an ingredient that's utilized to give it a little bit of a character, a little bit of a personality. And I think it could be very easily overlooked if you're not consciously looking for it. And the first time that I sprayed this on my skin, really, I just got a blast of incense and I kind of just tuned everything out because the way that I perceive smell is just so um, unusual in the sense that I tend to focus on a single note and I will follow that note throughout the entire composition of the fragrance. It's not unless I'm consciously looking for the other notes where it clicks and it's like, wow, so there is a little bit of bergamot or uh, there is a little bit of oud in this fragrance. And I think many other, fragrance, uh, many other ingredients in this fragrance could be overlooked if they're not really sought after. So there is a little bit of bergamot, but of course it's very volatile and with the uniqueness of this fragrance and it being as unique as it is it kind of caught me by surprise that they would use bergamot as a means of really just accentuating this composition because it is an ingredient that's very traditionally used but of course the pieces of the puzzle came together in uh, validating that okay a lot of the ingredients used here are of course traditional uh, ingredients of Arab perfume making. So it made a lot of sense. And the bergamot really only sticks around for, I would say, 15 to 20 minutes. It is very volatile and it's not going to be perceived unless you are making an effort to look for it. So you have a fragrance that opens up very smoky. You have the frankincense, the myrrh, and as I mentioned, the apopinax. Now, apopinax is a type of resin that is extracted from a tree and I believe the origin of the uh, sweet myrrh in this fragrance is Somalia. So what happens is an incision is made into the bark of the tree and this resin seeps out and it solidifies pretty quickly. So then it's cultivated in that manner and it's brought back to the laboratory and I think that's where uh, an essential oil may be uh, put together using either the process of solvent extraction or uh, steam distillation. I'm not quite sure which one it is in this fragrance's case but it does have that honey-like aroma so it opens up smoky but there is, you know, that sweet nuance to it that really could be a number of things in this fragrance. It's so busy and it's so complex and really is just a perfect representation of, you know, the chaos and order that this fragrance meant to really bring forward to the table and get across to the consumer. And it could be uh, because of the amber, and I'm referring to the sweetness again. It could be because of the amber. It could also be because of the labdanum, which I feel gives this fragrance not only a sweet smell, 
but an animalic smell because it has gotten compared a lot to ambergris. And of course, ambergris is found in the digestive tract of sperm whales and being that sperm whales are an endangered species there are actually countries that have banned the use of or the cultivation of ambergris so they use labdanum as an alternative so it gives it an ambery quality it also gives it a leather like quality and there is leather in this fragrance so i think that that um note or the utilization of that note was very well researched and was made uh selected very intentionally um, so you get a little bit of leather and it is noticeable in the opening but I think it becomes much more noticeable in the dry down. So while the resins kick in with full force, um, so does the leather and it becomes much more apparent that this is indeed at the heart an animalic fragrance. Now it's not animalic in the sense that you have castorium and civet or that it smells stinky or anything but the leather and the oud really do work together to give it that animalic nuance. Um, so it opens up smoky, it transitions into a bit of a resinous type of sweetness. Uh, again, I don't think all of the sweetness is attributed to the amber. I think the amber is the star player or the one resin that's really coming across much more clearly or much more evidently than the other resins. But the labdanum is pretty strong in this fragrance and so is uh, the apopinax. And I've gotten a chance to smell apopinax essential oil. I do have to admit that I only have a very small uh, bit of it just because it's pretty expensive. Um, but it does work very well in this fragrance in that it comes across smelling natural. There's nothing about this fragrance that smells synthetic, that smells you know, unnatural. It just smells like a very, you know, authentic representation of what, you know, an incense based fragrance that would have traditionally been composed many, many years ago in that region of the world would smell like in today, uh, in today's world. And uh, I think it does come across very well done and very well composed. And it has a very nice balance to it. And I would say that that really struck me as a surprise because this is a fragrance that comes across as a perfect example of a non-linear fragrance um, because the opening is so different and there's such a stark contrast from the opening of this fragrance to the dry down that uh, I wasn't really expecting the development that it has and uh, in many fragrances it's almost like I have to dig so deep just to really be able to explain how a fragrance develops and uh, the ingredients that I'm picking up four hours into the progression that I'm not able to pick up in the first hour of the development. And this is a fragrance where it just almost comes across effortless. And uh, if you get a chance to smell it, you'll see exactly what I mean. But there is such a strong development and progression in this fragrance that uh, it really helps in uh, bringing that theme across of chaos and uh, of course disorder in the opening and then resolution in the uh, dry down. And of course, there's also a little bit of patchouli in the dry down, which just contributes to that herbal feel. Um, you do have balsamic nuances attributed to other notes in this fragrance, um, but I think the uh, patchouli just gives it an herbal type of a feel. And then you have a little bit of oud. I would say that the oud comes across smelling offensive, but again, I think there are a lot of other notes in this fragrance that could potentially be offensive. Of course, an oregano note in the opening and a little bit of pepper. Now it's hard to make the distinction between whether the spiciness in the opening is attributed to the oregano note or to the pepper and there are people who have said that this fragrance smells culinary to their nose. I personally have to say that the oregano comes across very clear because although um, I have not gotten a chance to smell oregano essential oil, I use oregano very much in my cooking so I'm very familiar with the smell of it. and. Uh, the patchouli isn't as noticeable in the opening as it is in the dry down. So that herbal quality in the dry down, I'm sure, is due to the patchouli. And uh, after looking up the note pyramid, I realized that oregano is a head note in this fragrance. So it um, opens up very spicy, and I have no choice but to attribute, a, attribute excuse me, that spicy and herbal opening to the um, oregano. So it opens up smoky, spicy, dries down to something very beautifully resinous and sweet, a honey-like smell with leather nuances and then um, a little bit of sandalwood and oud working together very well and I could say that the sandalwood uh, brings forward a creamy type of sweetness to this fragrance but it's so hard to tell 
if the sweetness or the creaminess is really coming from the sandalwood uh, just because there are so many resins in this fragrance that I'd be more inclined to say that the resins are more responsible for the sweet factors or the sweetening agents or uh, elements of this fragrance than the sandalwood is. But for the most part, that is the note uh, pyramid or the composition of Interlude Man by Amouage and what I think it smells like. And next up, we have something that's fairly new to my channel and it is an analogy of Interlude Man by Amouage. One analogy that I would use in describing Interlude Man by Amouage, especially with its theme of conflict and resolution, is that I imagine someone in a room on New Year's Eve surrounded by their friends and loved ones and people who they have associated themselves with in the past year. And you're at that point where you're really starting to reflect on all the things that you did that entire year and retrospectively you're thinking of all the things that you had to work hard to achieve and acquire, whether it be landing that new job or graduating from college or, you know, finding your significant other. And in reflecting on those experiences, you think about what you had to go through. You think about all the effort that you had to put in for those. And I think that that is representative of the incense note in this fragrance is that it comes across very chaotic and disorderly. And uh, I think it works very well in representing the conflict aspect that uh, the theme is aiming to convey. And then of course the dry down is when you're focused on the television and the ball is about to drop and uh, everybody is starting to count backwards from 10 and then after everybody says the number one in unison and synchronicity everybody yells happy new year and uh, a new year has begun and I may very well be making this association just because of the time of the year that we're in uh, but once that new year comes through and it's finally 2013 or 2014 or whatever year you're in you start to think about all these things that you did in the past year and how you will set new goals for yourself how you will endure new conflicts but from those new conflicts you will have even newer resolutions and you are a wiser person this year than you were last year. You are a more successful person this year than you were last year. And you are a stronger person, both mentally and physically this year than you were last year. And that strength and that success and that wisdom will just continue to increase more and more as the years go by. And this is a fragrance that I can personally see myself wearing whenever I need to resolve a conflict, whenever I find myself in a hard time because I know that eventually a sweet success will be the result of it. And eventually things will tone down and uh, I will not always be in that conflict, but there will be a resolution waiting for me at the other side of the tunnel. So that was my analogy on Interlude Man by Amouage. And next up we have the rating for Interlude Man by Amouage. As far as the rating goes for Interlude Man by Amouage, first up we have uniqueness and overall smell, and I gave this fragrance a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10 because it's a beautiful contemporary interpretation of church incenses. And when you're dealing with ingredients like frankincense, myrrh, and a poppinax, also known as sweet myrrh in this fragrance's case, it could come across smelling a bit traditional, but this fragrance takes them and utilizes them in a way that they come across smelling novel, innovative, contemporary with an air of sophistication to them too and again there is no other fragrance in my collection that I could really compare to Interlude Man so for that reason I gave this fragrance a 10 out of 10 for overall smelly uniqueness. Next up we have Longevity and I also gave this fragrance a 10 out of 10. This fragrance excels in the longevity department in the sense that I've gotten 12 plus hours from this fragrance. This is an Eau de Parfum concentration so it is pretty strong and I would say that on average I've gotten 10 to 12 plus hours from it. Superior performance, everything that you've heard about this fragrance is true. Next up we have projection and I ended up giving this fragrance again a 10 out of 10. I wore this to work one day and I was approached by a co-worker five hours into my shift only to have him tell me that he was able to smell my fragrance on me from well over five feet away. So this is a fragrance that projects well over an arm's length and it projects very well even after that incense note has begun to die down and not become as noticeable. The entire composition as a whole, however, is still very noticeable. So amazing projection from this fragrance, 10 out of 10. Next up we have versatility and I gave Interlude Man a 5 out of 10. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. 
this is a fragrance that could be worn during casual scenarios I would uh, be more likely to reach for a fragrance that is not as pricey as this one but again this is an investment and uh, I could picture this one being worn uh, during semi-formal and I have personally worn this on a formal occasion and I think it suited the occasion very well very appropriate for where it was worn to now this is a fragrance that is more geared toward the colder weather so I could picture somebody wearing this and I would be more inclined to wear this on a cold uh, fall day as well as the winter time but I would not wear this in the spring or the summer as I feel it would be overkill and of course also in terms of versatility this is geared more toward the masculine crowd uh, there is a women's rendition on the market that does smell a bit of kiwi fruit in the opening and has fruit nuances while maintaining that incense quality so if you are a woman and you're watching this review I would highly recommend you check that one out before you get your nose on this one but uh, if this is what you end up liking then no one's telling you that you can't wear whatever makes you happy to each his own or in this case her own but a 5 out of 10 for versatility and then last up we have presentation we already tackled that I love the presentation of this fragrance from the bottle to the theme it satisfied to the beautiful box with the chaos represented in brush strokes so I gave this one a 10 out of 10 for presentation and then that brings this fragrance to an average score or an overall rating of 9 out of 10. So there you have it that was my review of Interlude Man by Amouage as always thank you so much for watching please don't forget to comment rate and subscribe it would be greatly appreciated again this has been Stephen with another fragrance review from Red Thanks for watching.